Um, hello and welcome to this video. So in this video we're going to be talking about Hadoop and more specifically we're going to be walking through how to set up Hadoop on a single Linux virtual box and we'll be setting up Hadoop in what's known as the pseudo distributed mode. So essentially we'll be running um, like a mini Hadoop cluster on a single VM. So we'll jump right into it and we'll start up a Linux VM and specifically it's Ubuntu 14.04 LTS and where the virtualization client will be using is Oracle VirtualBox. At the moment, this is just a generic, you know, Ubuntu. I haven't really done anything special to it or installed anything. So during this video, um, you'll get the chance to see two screens up on my uh, desktop here. The first you'll see is the just a normal terminal, and the second you'll see is this text file, which is sort of like a little transcript or um, like a list of all the commands and everything that I'll be typing to install Hadoop. This will be available in the description of the video. So, um, you know, if this video goes too fast or too slow for you, you can kind of pause things and follow along with this and take it at your own pace. So with that, installing Hadoop on this Linux box, we'll need to first install Java. We'll need to disable IPv6. We'll need to add a dedicated Hadoop user, install SSH. We'll need to give the dedicated Hadoop user pseudo permissions. We'll need to set up SSH certificates. We'll need to install Hadoop. We'll need to configure Hadoop by editing these five configuration files. We'll need to format the Hadoop file system. We'll need to start Hadoop. We'll need to test that it's actually running, or I'll show you how to test to make sure it's actually running. And then we'll need to show you how to stop the Hadoop. Um, so 12 steps, we'll you know walk through them. So to start, the first one is installing Java. So we'll start by tackling this task. Much of Hadoop is actually written in Java. Um, so we definitely need Java installed. Before we even do that, we'll just update our system. And this will likely take a minute. And once that is complete, we can actually install Java. And this will also likely take a minute or several minutes. And once Java is finished installing, we'll check that it actually installed correctly just by calling java-version. And we see it actually returns a, you know, the version of Java that's installed, which is good. So that's the first step down, installing Java. So looking at the second step, we're going to disable IPv6. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to install Vim. So we're going to be editing some files and things like that. Um, and not only in this step, but in other steps too. So I just kind of prefer Vim as my preferred text editor to do this with. But you can really use any text editor, VI, or anything like that. So I just installed Vim quick. And then with that, we'll actually use Vim to open up the systemcontrol.config file. And in here, we will add at the bottom um, these four lines, which will disable IPv6. And I will fix this white space. Awesome, so that's good. And then just to check that this actually worked, if we just cat this file, Should return a zero, which means this is good. Um, means that the IPv6 is actually disabled. So step two is good. So we've installed Java. We've disabled IPv6. So now we're going to add a dedicated Hadoop user. So this is pretty straightforward. The first thing we'll do is we will add the group Hadoop, which already exists. Then the second thing we'll do is we'll actually add a user, HD user, and this will be our Hadoop user. And you can enter this information if you like, but I'm just leaving it blank. Cool. Um, so now we have two users on our system. We have our normal kind of user that I logged in as before. I named it Hadoop. And now we have a second user, which is HD user. And that'll become our dedicated Hadoop user. So anytime we want to do anything related to Hadoop, so whether it be starting and stopping it, um, you know, doing different things, uh, starting up other packages, stuff like that, we'll be in, we'll log in as the dedicated user and do all of that. 
So now the next step, step four, installing SSH. Oh, this is pretty straightforward. Will likely take a minute. Awesome, so that's complete. So now the next thing we want to do is that um, HD user or dedicated Hadoop user that we made, we we'll want to give it pseudo permissions and we we'll want to add it to the pseudo group. This way when we log in as the HD user, we can, you know, pseudo and run administrative commands and things like that. It'll come in handy a little bit and it'll just help us avoid some problems. Then step six, we're going to set up our SSH certificate so that we can pretty easily SSH into the local host and into the using the HD user or using the normal user. So first thing though is we'll switch users to HD user, which we just created. Then we'll set up an SSH key. Great. And then we'll add that key to our list of authorized keys. This way we know that it is good. And awesome. And then to test that this actually worked, we should be able to SSH into the local host. And yes, we'll accept. Nice, you need a little warranty message, and so basically you're successful in SSH into the local host, which is good. So those are for the sort of the first six steps. Um, so it went by pretty quick, but just to review what we actually did again, the first thing we did was install Java, just sudo app get install and the you know the default JK, JDK. We disabled IPv6 by editing one of the config files. We added a dedicated Hadoop user. So if you were to like lock this and like log back in, you would see that there's two users, one of them being um, Hadoop or HD user. We installed SSH, we gave that HD user pseudo permission, and then we set up the SSH certificates for the local host. So now we're up to step seven, and we can actually install Hadoop or at least download it and uh, start to configure it. So to do this, we're already logged in as the HD user, but if you're not, you'll want to be logged in as the dedicated Hadoop user. And then we'll want to pull down or wget Hadoop. And this will likely take a minute or more likely several minutes, depending on your internet speed. Great. And once that's finished downloading, if we just look at the content of our directory, you now notice that we have Hadoop 2.6, but it's the, the tar file, so it's compressed. So we'll want to start by uncompressing that. And once that's complete, we'll actually want to move into that directory. All right. Awesome. And then we'll actually want to, we're going to end up moving the entire content of this unzipped um, file into this directory that we're going to make here. Excellent. And we're going to move everything now. And awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So now we've downloaded and set up Hadoop. So we're going to want to... We're going to want to now um, edit these five files that are the five configuration files for Hadoop. So there's the bash rc file, the Hadoop um, dash environment.sh, the core site XML, the map read site.xml, and then the HTMF hdfs site.xml um, yeah so to start out though we can see the into our home directory if we want we don't have to um, and then we can open up our bash rc profile and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to at the bottom of this file <clears throat> add in these lines here which are the hadoop variables that we want to set from the get-go. And I will fix the white space. Excellent. So the bash receive file is good. So now we will edit the Hadoop environment at SH. Excellent. And all we're going to do here is we're going to go down to the Java home and get rid of this little variable. 
and we'll put the pathway to our Java package that we installed. Nice, so that was quick and painless. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the core site in that XML file. But first thing we'll have to do is create this temporary directory. And we'll want to channel. Awesome. And now we can actually open up the file. Great. And now in this file, between these two configuration tags, right, we're going to want to place the, uh, we'll fix the white space on this. You want to place this, actually, sorry. You want to place this code into it. And I won't fix the white space on that. It's going to take too long. Awesome. And then the next thing we can start looking at is the map read.xml. So if we just copy that over, and then if we open up our copied version of that file, awesome. And then same thing as before between the configuration tags, you will want to copy and paste this local configuration. Nice, nice, nice. And then finally, we're on our last file, which is the HDFF site that is to that XML. And we'll need to make some directories prior to editing that file. Nice. Awesome. And then we can actually open it up. Nice. And then between the configuration tags, same as always, we can copy and paste our code. Nice. Cool. And then those are the configured files. So kind of back it out to a global view. We did the first six steps before. And then we installed Hadoop or really downloaded it. And then we configured it with these, you know, five files by opening them up in Vim and editing them and doing a little bit of work in terms of changing their locations and things like that. So now that's all I have to do is to format the actual Hadoop file system. Um, so since we made a lot of changes, it's probably a good idea to restart our system. So we can take a minute and actually do that. Nice. So I just finished rebooting. Log in now. Open up our terminal again and I'll pull our cheat sheet side by side. So now we'll scroll down to formatting our Hadoop file system. And we'll want to, since we're going to format it, we'll want to be in the HD user or the Hadoop user. Awesome. And now here's the moment of truth. We can see if we did this correctly. Nice, and this will take a minute to actually go through and format it. And once that's complete, our Hadoop file system is formatted. So we're already logged in as the HD user, but we will CD over to the SBIN. And if you look in here, there's some really useful scripts that we can use. Um, as you notice, there's a lot of start and stop scripts, um, but we will start all. And this will start up Hadoop, and this will take a minute. Excellent. And once that's complete, the two ways we can see if it's actually running is if we do JPS, you should. So there's actually one small thing that we forgot to do, or that I forgot to do, and that's before we check JPS or try and run the start all script, we actually have to sudo chown this whole Hadoop directory or basically just change the permissions, the ownership of it, to that HD user. Because if we don't, one thing I just discovered is that we're actually going to get an error. 
when we try to start all. So I'll add that to the demo here. And now if we start all .sh, it'll take a minute to get going. But once it is all finished, if you call JPSS, you should see that there's multiple things running here. So you have the name node, the secondary node, the node manager, the data node, things like that. And then the other way we can test just to make sure that everything's working too, is we can run this. And you should see that everything's listening, all the nodes are listening to each other. And then the final thing you can do to test if it's running is you can actually, since we're on the desktop, you can go over to Firefox and we can call up the local host in our browser. And you'll see here's an overview of our Hadoop cluster and know that's running. Um, yeah, so that's a good thing. So Hadoop is up and running. And then one last thing you want, might want to know how to do is how to um, stop Hadoop. Um, so if you don't want it running all the time and you just do stop all dot sh and similar to before it'll take a minute but once it finishes um hadoop should be stopped there's from like gps for example you'll just see that there's that one uh, gps running now so yeah so that's uh hadoop pseudo distributed mode um on a single virtual machine hopefully this video helped you out and wasn't too fast paced um if it was hopefully the this sort of transcript in the descriptions could help you out so um thanks for tuning in